Okay, the Detroit Lions are bringing in, have brought in just a mountain of a man, just an absolute beast of a man that has all the intangibles that can make up a great future offensive lineman. It doesn't mean that he's a great offensive lineman right this second, but he could be a great future offensive lineman. So we're going to talk about who that is, who they brought in, where they brought him in from, and all this very unique stuff. So let's hit it. Also, we're going to show you a couple pictures and a quick couple videos of what he did um, on his uh, workout uh, for, you know, not at the NFL Combine, but at the Canadian Combine where some scouts were there. But the Detroit Lions have brought in this guy by the name of of, sorry for the quick scrolling, of Giovanni Manu. This guy is six foot seven, 352 pounds. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's too big. Yeah, it's too big if he can't move, but we'll get into whether or not he can move or not in just a second. All right, he played left guard and left tackle for the University of British Columbia, UBC. All right, he was in all Canada honors last two years, obviously. He was born in Tonga, but he moved to Canada as a kid. So here he is, and I'm going to um, get a couple of these things. Um, look at him. Like, what a massive human just an absolute massive massive man and here he is uh with his high jump all right remember 360 pounds almost like look at this guy just insanity look at that all right so he got a little piece of that and here he is just standing like i mean when you look at him all you can think is this guy is just an absolute physical freak of nature just ridiculous with the athleticism that this guy has um it really is amazing at this um but i went and did a, a little bit more research like this doesn't happen as far as i know i, I understand people taken from the canadian football league but <coughs> whoa sneezes all right but i can't remember the last time a canadian collegiate athlete was drafted into the nfl draft luckily um I found it. It's unusual. Um, but the last one selected based on this at Lions Wire was defensive tackle David Anyamata with the New Orleans Saints back in 2016. Now, David Anyamata is a good player. Um, that New Orleans Saints team, guess who they had as the head coach? And Detroit has shown they're not afraid to take a look at Canadian prospects. We've already looked at a couple already. So, when could this guy be taken is the better question. And in order to answer that, I kind of want to look at this. It is kind of a thought that maybe he won't go drafted. Do I think someone could take a flyer on him? I do. The Detroit Lions have two sixth round picks. All right. So they only have a first, a second, a third, and then they have nothing in the fourth. Then they have a fifth, two sixth, and a seventh. I think the Lions could use one of their sixth round picks on him. Like, why not? I mean, here's here's what we're saying about our offensive line. We're set on the on the on the ends of the offensive line. We know that. All right. Like, we understand that. But at the at the same time, what about the contract? Sewell's set to be paid a big payday. So what does Decker's contract look like going forward? Are they going to have to figure out a spot for Taylor Decker? Will they be able to continue to pay Taylor Decker? All right, here's a guy, when you look at his contract breakdown, he is in the final year of his contract. He is being paid $19.1 million this year. Do you have the ability to keep paying him? Uh, Brad Holmes just went on uh, today. Was it today? Was it yesterday? Depends on when you're watching this. Um. He went on and uh, talked to the Detroit media and talked about the importance of the offensive line. He talked about whether your quarterback is mobile, whether he's immobile, whether he's a scrambler, anywhere in between, he believes that the offensive line may be one of the single most important parts to the success of an offense, or if not the single most important part. So they have always put a large amount of resources into that offensive line. So my belief on this is give Panay Sewell everything. Don't give him a five-year contract. Give him like a seven-year contract with how young he is. 
Um, that'll keep it cheaper, I promise. And then um, if you if he'll let you give him a seven-year contract extension, you can keep Decker around. You can. You can draft his replacement in the first round this year, or you can take a couple of flyers on guys in the later rounds, someone like Giovanni, and see if it sticks. See if you find a diamond in the rough that is really, really, really really good, <laughs> right? I mean, but there are so many, but I want you to look at some of these numbers. He's seven, six foot seven and a half inches. He runs, um, a 5.0640. I've also seen 4.9440. So at one point he was actually tracked under a 540 at that, at that size. That's insanity. He has 34 and a half inch arm. So his arms are absolutely long enough. He ran a 4.81 shuttle, which tells you as some of that, you know, um, movement ability, even at that extreme size. And he's, he, that came out with an overall RAS score. This is what I'm reading off a site. This is actually a Packers website that I found this because I couldn't find his RAS anywhere, but they apparently did. And they said he had an 8.84, RAS, which is relative athletic score, which means that he was the 88.4th percentile uh, in athleticism of all tackles that have ever been tested. And that usually goes back to about 1986, 1987, something like that. So he's an extremely athletically gifted player. It's just going to be a strong learning curve for him. Um, but the body might be able to make up for some of it. And so you just have to wonder what what could he be? Like, there's just not a lot of info on the guy. You can't look at PFF stats on him because PFF doesn't care about the Canadian college football, right? You can't, I can't find numbers as far as sacks given up and all that kind of stuff and block rate and efficiency rate. None of that is available like it is for the other prospects. And that is a, one of the reasons why he'll probably go later in the draft. So, or honestly, many people are saying not going to be drafted and then just a bidding war will go for him, um, in as a UDFA. So if we could get him in the sixth or seventh round, I'd be very happy with it. And if we can't get him in the sixth or seventh round, if we get him as an undrafted free agent, that would be like my number one guy that I'd want as an undrafted free agent. Um, because he's just a guy who has all the upside in the world and you could have control of him for the next two, three, four years. Um, that could be really, really good. It is, it is things like this that separate teams. If you can find a diamond in the rough like this that ends up becoming a future starter or at least a good third tackle or something like that, like that is what takes teams from being really good teams to elite. That is the kind of scouting that works and the kind of coaching that gets them there. I have trust in our staff to get him there. Like, like again, again, I don't know how else to say it other than like, look at this guy. Look at him. Does that look like a guy who doesn't have athleticism written all over him? That's all I'm asking. What are your thoughts on him? I know you don't know much about him. None of us can see tape. Whatever. I might be able to find some. But, um, and from the very, very little that I've seen of him, like, yeah, obviously he's good. He was an uh, all, you know, first team all whatever they call it in Canada. Um, so he was good there, but those accolades don't mean as much because it's, again, in Canada. So, um I'm not saying they don't play good football there. Relax. All right. Hey, make sure you're watching the draft with us. We can't wait to see you there. Um, hey, one week away. Can't wait. See ya.